Hey guys, thanks for joining. In this video, we're going to take a look at problem 1971 on LeetCode Find If Path Exists in Graph. So, what we'll do in this video is first, we'll go over the problem description, take a look at the examples they provide. Then, we'll discuss any edge cases that we have to look out for. We'll think about how we can implement a solution and what kind of data structures and algorithms we can use to make it as efficient as possible. And finally, we'll go ahead and actually implement the solution and submit our code. So I'm going to be coding this in Java, but if you want to follow along in a different language, that's fine as well. All of the concepts will transfer from language to language. So let's jump into the problem. The problem reads, there is a bidirectional graph with n vertices, where each vertex is labeled from 0 to n minus 1 inclusive. The edges in the graph are represented as a 2D integer array edges, where each edge denotes a bidirectional edge between vertex UI and vertex VI. Each vertex pair is connected by at most one edge, and no vertex has an edge to itself. You want to determine if there is a valid path that exists from vertex source to vertex destination. Given edges and the integers n, source and destination return true if there is a valid path from source to destination, or false otherwise. So let's take a look at the examples. The first example they give us, we can see that there's always going to be a path between any two nodes because of the way this is connected. So for an input of n is equal to 3 with these edges, source 0, destination 2. The output is true because we can see that there's at least one path. In the example two, we can see that there is no path for source is equal to zero and destination is equal to five. No matter how we traverse starting from zero, we're not going to be able to connect to five, so the output would be false. So let's think about what we can infer from these two examples. The first one, we can see that there are no disconnects, such as what we see in example two. So the graph itself is connected. In example two, the graph is considered disconnected because there exists nodes which there is no valid path for. So that, by definition, means the graph is disconnected. So we can see two subgraphs here, a subgraph on the left and one on the right. So if we had input of source is equal to zero and destination is equal to two or destination is equal to one, we could still have a valid path even though it's disconnected. It's just when we have to jump over that disconnect that we no longer have a valid path. So when we implement a solution, that's something we have to account for. We have to account for the graph being disconnected, the possibility of it, that is. And we have to account for maybe even if it is disconnected, there is still a path within a connected subgraph. So in this example, with 0 and 5 as input, there is no path. But from 0 and 2, in this connected subgraph to the left, there is a path. So in terms of implementing a solution, we can use this knowledge and traverse the graph accordingly. So the implementation we're going to do here, we're going to do a breadth first search through the graph starting with the source and looking for the destination. So if you're not familiar with graph traversal algorithms, breadth first search, I do have a link in the description which introduces it in a lot more detail. So feel free to take a look at that and pause the video if you need to and then you can go back here once you've familiarized yourself with those concepts. So moving on to the actual implementation, what we're going to do is, one, we're going to convert this list of edges into a graph representation similar to an adjacency matrix, which means, or an adjacency list, which means that we'll have a list of nodes. And we can have a list here because the nodes are always going to be 0 to n minus 1. If we had nodes of arbitrary values, we could use a map instead. But since it's going to be this, we can use the indices of an array as the key. So we can just use a list instead of a map. So first we'll do that where our array will have the node value as the index and the list of nodes it connects to as the value. That will let us iterate through the graph naturally. Instead of having to go through the edges each time, we can just directly access different nodes in the graph. Then from there, we'll do a breadth first search starting with the source and we'll be able to use that graph representation to make the algorithm a lot faster. And what we'll do is we'll just perform one breadth first search and that will cover the subgraph that the source exists on. If we wanted to do a breadth first search across the entire graph, we would need to do one per disconnected subgraph. But in this case, we only need to do one at all because we're just checking if a path exists. So basically, we're just going to look for the destination starting from the source. If we don't find it, then that means there is no path to it from the source and we can return false. If we do find it, we can return true. Some other quick base cases to call out, if the list of edges is empty, then we know there's no path because there's no edges to traverse. If the list of nodes is empty or there's just one, then we know there is a path because it's just that node. And same thing if the node source is equal to the destination, then we can just return true immediately because we're already at the destination. 
So first let's make our method to convert the edges into a graph. So I've copied the skeleton in here. We can actually make the implementation from here. So what I'm going to do is use an array of array lists. So that's going to look like this. And the reason I want to do it this way is because the first dimension will just be the nodes. And since we have 0 through n, we know ahead of time what the size is going to be. But for each array in the second dimension, that will be the edges that node connects to. We don't know ahead of time, so we're just going to use an array list instead of trying to figure it out or iterate or whatever. This will make things a little bit simpler. And we'll use the array object and call a new instance so that we can create this array of size n. Then we'll initialize each position with a list. And then that means we'll iterate i is equal to zero as less than n, i plus plus, list i is equal to new array list. Then we'll iterate over the edges and add them in. So this is a graph which is connected in both ways bidirectional, which means that we have to, for any edge we create, create the reverse direction edge. So that will look like this. We have list edge zero, dot add edge one, and then we'll do list edge one, dot add edge zero. Then we'll return the list. So we've done the first part there. Now we just need to make the method to do the breadth first search and then bring it all together on valid path. So I've copied the signature of that method here. Now as a breadth first search, basically what we have to do is keep track of the nodes we visited already, keep track of nodes which we need to visit, and then iterate while we still have nodes to visit. So we'll use a hash set and a queue for these. create the queue as well. In Java, there is no actual queue implementation per se. We'll use a linked list, which will provide that functionality. If you're in a language such as C Sharp, that will provide a queue implementation. If you're in a language such as JavaScript, there's no queue implementation or linked list implementation. You'll have to create one from scratch, or you can visit my website and copy and paste the code I have there and use it that way as well. Then at this point, while we still have nodes to visit, so while the queue is not empty, we'll keep doing some logic. And we'll push the initial node value into the nodes to visit, just as the initial case. So here we'll grab the node that's currently pending, add it to visited nodes, then we'll iterate over its connected nodes. And this is where the graph we created comes into play. We wouldn't be able to do this like this if we were using the list of edges. And we're going to check if we haven't visited the next node yet. We'll check if the node is the value we're looking for. If it is, we'll return true. Otherwise, we'll keep looking. Otherwise, we'll add it to nodes to visit. Finally, we're going to return false. And that we're returning false because at this point, if we've gone through all of the nodes to visit and we haven't found it, then we've fully explored that subgraph. We haven't found it, so we'll return false to say that no path exists. So now we have those two in place. The last thing we need to do is put it all together. So first, we'll just check some base cases. If source is equal to destination, return true. If edges.length is equal to zero, also return true. Otherwise, we'll go into our logic. So let's go ahead and submit this and see if we have the correct implementation. 
So I just ran this a few times. The first two times I had some minor spelling mistakes to fix. Once I did, we got the correct implementation and I ran it a few times just because leak code has some variability when you run the same solution multiple times. We can see 156 versus 78. So we can accept the implementation that we have here. So that covers the content for this video. If you made it to the end, please leave a like and subscribe for more LeetCode videos, and it really helps out the channel. And also be sure to check out our website, bitethisstore.com, where we have tons of programming articles related to data structures and algorithms, interview questions, as well as topics such as web development. And we'll also have an online store with mugs, laptop sleeves, and other products centered around programming humor, programming memes. It's definitely worth taking a look. Thanks for watching.